five more gates of Netzach. These are all the gates of Kaf, the path of Venus. Now, Kaf means the palm of the hand. In fact, it looks like a cupped hand. So there is a sense of uh, gift giving, uh, safety, protection, etc. Now, uh, this path leads from Gedula to Netzach, <clears throat> from mercy to vitality, from uh, the center of the pillar of mercy to the bottom of the pillar of mercy. Now, <clears throat> Gedula, the collective awareness, the collectivity of awareness occurs within the mental realm of uh, subjective meaning, right? Okay. Netzach occurs in the astral realm of significance. So this is a translation from that subjective meaning and collectivity to an astral manifestation of the same essence, this pillar of mercy, <clears throat> in the astral realm of significance. And how that translates is in affinity, okay, affection. This is the path of Venus. Now, Venus, in this context, um, affection, affinity, these are human, of course, concepts, and they're emotional concepts. And this is how it translates in our reality as emotions. Netzach is the realm of emotion, and this descends along the path of Venus into Netzach. Now, <clears throat> more universally, for uh, most of the uh, beings in the universe do not experience human-like emotions, like a lump of lead <laughs> is not going to experience affection for others. But it does have a physical affinity for other elements, okay? Well, what this means really is that the universe meets all of our needs. As our needs change, the universe responds in like kind it changes in concert with our changes in our changing needs. This is the universe's affinity for each sentient being. Okay? Every sentient self, the needs of every sentient self are met by the universe. So this is divine providence right here in this path. This is, in human terms, divine love. This is what that means. <clears throat> divine love is merely the universe meeting all of our needs, which the universe has <clears throat> this relationship with itself. All the parts of the cosmos have this relationship with the whole. We all participate in this relationship with everything else in the cosmos. We are need meeting the needs of others just as others are meeting our needs. We all have this relationship with the universe, and that is what this path 
of calf is. It's the way that the universe meets all of our needs. It's the way everything integrates with everything else in this beautiful infinite dance, this infinitely complex dance that we live in, this interaction between self and other, where we're always opening to other and closing off to self, other, self. And this is, this is how we grow and change and the universe, the whole universe, is doing this dance with us, with everything, is participating in this dance of affection. <clears throat> it's through affection that the universe accommodates our needs. Our needs, our truest needs, not just our wants and likes, that certainly plays a part and are often reflective of our true needs in some way. But all the universe concerns itself with is our needs, is the need of everything for its own evolution, because this is all about the I self-realizing itself. And we are all, everything is the body of the I self-realizing itself, this process. So we're all engaged in this process. Okay? So, <clears throat> the first gate will be the linear gate of Gedjula, down the path of Calf Venus, into Netzach, and then back up. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you pursue this path from a universal perspective, you will experience and come to know what universal love is and what it means. It's not just this emotional thing, okay? It's a practical, functional, fundamental part of the universe. It's nothing special. <laughs> it's like, oh, the universe loves me. Uh-uh, the universe loves everybody. We all love each other in this way, okay? We're all providing for each other and then we travel back up. <clears throat> From the personal perspective, you learn how your connection with the collective translates into your experience of resonating, okay? This is the essence of resonance, is that affection, okay? That non-emotional, just sort of genetically embedded <laughs> affection, okay? <clears throat> this is the essence of resonance here, found in this path, okay? So, that's the first gate. Okay, the next gate is a triangle. Now, we start from Gedula, go down to Netzach, following the path of Venus. And then we take that hidden path <clears throat> up to Tiferet. Okay? Then we take the path of Teth, of Leo, down into Gajula, and then back around. Now, <clears throat> what this does is it, uh, it brings Tiferet into this equation. And... <clears throat> explains how much the uh, solitary self, how big a role it plays in this process of affinity. Because, 
you as a person, as an individual, as a solitary self, are capable of affinity to only a limited part of the universe, basically. That we naturally feel affinity for. Okay? So this illustrates to you what that particular flavors uh, <clears throat> of affinity uh, you are capable of naturally. Okay? That evolves <clears throat> throughout your existence. But this is where you start, basically with your scope of affinities. Okay? So that's different for every solitary self. <clears throat> okay? Because remember, we are solitary selves with an astral sentient body. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so, th there. That is that gate. Then, the next gate... <clears throat> is a quadrangle. And it, again, starts from Gedjula, travels down that path of Kaf into Netzach, comes up the hidden path into Tiferet, then up the path of Beth and Saturn, up to Kether, and then the hidden path from Kether to Gedjula, and then back around. Okay? Now this, of course, brings Kether into the equation. And how that affinity is all about the I, self-realizing itself. And how big a role that plays in this whole process. Okay? And again, tying it into the solitary self. The next gate is also a quadrangle, and it goes from Kedjula down into Netzach along the path of Kaf. Okay, then that hidden path crossing the Alafresh up to Bina, and then the path of Vav, backwards on the path of Vav, up to Kether, and then Kether straight down to uh, Gajula, and then back around. Uh, now, this engages not only Kether, but Bina, the greater self. And the greater self's influence <clears throat> on the sentient self in this context of the path of calf, the, the, the nature of resonance, the nature of affinity, and the impress of the greater self, again on that, that range of affinities that we each possess, okay? Okay, and the last gate is a triangle. Now, this again starts in Gedjula, Follows the path of calf down in the net sock, comes straight up to Kether, and then down to Gajua. Okay? And then, of course, back around. Now, this, I mean, I don't know how clearly it can be stated in, in gate terms. <laughs> the essence of Kether in this process. That it is Kether, it is the one self, the I, enacting this whole process. It is the I looking after itself. This is divine providence here. Um, yeah. That's what, th that connection to the divine provider, so to speak, is found in this gate. This is a very powerful gate. Yes. That's all the gates of calf. So next time we will 
begin the gates of Samech, of Sagittarius. So, until then, bye-bye.